Hello, everyone. My name is Michael. Uh, we are here in Berlin, uh, July 2021, at the Interoperability eVPN uh, testing show. Uh, we have a great opportunity to uh, experiment the new uh, optimized inter subnet multicast routing with uh, Arista, Juniper, and Nokia. So I'm Michael, part of the uh, QFX uh, product team at Juniper Networks. With me, we have uh, Jorge. Please, Jorge, introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Jorge Rabadan, uh, working for Nokia as a product manager based in Mountain View. And uh, yeah, testing here with Michael and, and Alex, EVPM VXLAN for uh, layer three multicast. Thank you, Jorge. So with me, we have Alex uh, from Arista. Please, Alex, Alex, introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Alex Nickel. I work in the product management team uh, within Arista's routing group. And uh, as you say, we're going to be testing OSM, so EVPN multicast routing with the x encapsulation. Super, super. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. So uh, before we uh, share more details about the topology that we are using for the OISM interoperability, I would like to remind a couple of uh, um, topics around the motivation for the new OISM technology within the EVPN VXLAN data center project. So one of the uh, main goal of this technology is really to uh, simplify, make it smooth uh, from the integration point of view, the introduction of multicast in the edge routed data center topologies, right? Which is probably the most popular uh, EVPN VXLAN uh, flavor uh, nowadays. So we believe uh, same as we did for unicast uh, inter IRB uh, routing, we also needed the technology that allows to optimize the multicast part within the edge routed data center architectures. So we can help optimizing the scale of the multicast in case of uh, OISM, because simply every lead device can have dedicated bridge, do bridge domains, right? So it means uh, if we want to have a fully distributed model of uh, data center, we have with OISM the opportunity to really optimize the scaling, allocate bridge uh, domains for, for specific uh, lead devices of the same uh, data center fabric. And uh, in order to optimize that scaling, we are using the concept of SBD uh, in case of OISM, which actually glues all the, the different uh, bridge domains that are specific for uh, the, the different lead devices within the fabric. So we will be showing you the concept of SBD within that demo. And another reason for uh, OISM is really to optimize the number of uh, flooding max hops that are used on the top of the rack switch, uh, switch level. And then uh, obviously one of the important aspects is that whenever you integrate a data center fabric, this fabric usually integrates with some of the core IP networks. So with OISM, we have also the possibility to easily integrate a data center fabric with the existing uh, core IP multicast network. And then the last thing is really to use a common uh, control plane capabilities for unicast and multicast. So in case of OISM, we are still using eVPN uh, capabilities that are uh, existing for quite some time now on the market, right? So uh, same technology uh, for, uh, from the control plane point of view, uh, we are using the route type three, route type six for the signalization part. And there are no specific new route types for OISM itself. Just a couple of flags and communities are added in order to support these capabilities. But overall, we are using the EVPN capabilities that were existing for quite some time now uh, from the standardization point of view. So what was the goal of the interoperability in uh, ENTC uh, 2021? was really to make sure the customers are getting an industry standard and open solutions to uh, interconnect the model modern data center overlays with the existing IP pin domains, right? And second aspect is really providing uh, control plane capabilities uh, uh, verifications between different vendors. So whenever we consider open standards such as EVPN, uh, we want to make sure that uh, this standard is really uh, helping to interrupt between different vendors, right? So for example, we can have a, a set of lead devices from one vendor, and then for example, uh, pick up a border leaf uh, for, from the other vendor, right? So that, that was one of the goal to, to verify that we, we offer to our customers the, the best user experience around interoperability as well. 
And then verifying the data plane multicast capabilities between pen and DNIs. We want to make sure if, as long as the control plane is working fine, very important is to make sure that the data plane part is also uh, following the control plane, right? So we verified these two aspects, control plane and data plane uh, during this show this year. So here is the topology that we were using. So we have just a simplified topology where you can see uh, the Juniper QFX 5120-48Y lead device. We have a, a RISA device, which uh, is uh, connected to uh, a helper spine device, which is just delivering uh, IP uh, transport capabilities. And then we have Nokia uh, leaf device, which is part of the same uh, uh, data center fabric, right? And regarding the Nokia, we have on uh, Nokia leaf device, we have a source multicast uh, connected from Spirant, right? So Spirant is injecting this multicast feed on Nokia, and that Nokia leaf device is replicating that multicast, but provided it gets the right control plane information from Jupyter and Arista, right? So as long as we don't send any of the interest in that specific multicast group, then Nokia is not gonna flood the network, right? So the traffic will stop here as long as there's no interest in uh, receiving that specific multicast feed. So as you can see also in the diagram, we, can, we have a specific bridge domains for each of the uh, leaf devices. It means the Nokia uh, leaf device, he's not expecting to know, uh, for example, the MAC addresses of the uh, multicast receivers, right? Because the bridge domains are specific uh, uh, to the given top of the rack leaf device, right? On the other hand, the information he gets from uh, the Arista as a Juniper device is uh, leveraged by the SBD uh, concept, right? So whenever there is an interest to receive this traffic, right, this 255 registered to that multicast leader, then uh, actually the IM routes as well as uh, SMET routes are generated within that common SBD bridge domain, right? So once the Nokia gets that information, only at that moment, the uh, multicast feed is gonna be sent to the, to the right lead device. And if for some reason, for example, uh, uh, the, the multicast host is sending uh, uh, the leave message, obviously that multicast feed is not gonna be replicated to here, but just, just to that specific uh, lead device, right? So we have this uh, optimized way of allocating the bridge domains per top of the rack and still maintain uh, a, a common multicast OISM domain for the delivery of, for example, videos or any media related uh, networking, right? Mm, so for example, we may have also sometimes a scenario where, where, where the spine device or the border also connects to existing pin domain. We didn't verify that part, but in fact, uh, one of the interests of OISM is also to connect for example, to an existing uh, core IP domain, which would uh, translate in the peg role of, uh, of the device. In this case, we don't have that peg role uh, enabled. So we are just using fabric uh, OISM uh, capabilities. And uh, now we will just move to show you some of the CLI commands uh, from each of the vendors in order to give you uh, much more information about control plane and data plane. Thank you. Now we would like to show you some of the uh, control plane uh, ingredients of OISM. So one of the things that we would like to demonstrate to you is the uh, type of routes uh, of EDPN that we are advertising in case of OISM. So here in this simplified example, we are just seeing uh, the IM routes that are originated on uh, Juniper QFX 5120. And we advertise these uh, uh, IM routes as well as SMET routes uh, to uh, a spine device, right? Which then advertises to uh, the rest of the uh, nodes from the same uh, data center fabric topology. So if we dig into the details of the prefix that is advertised as a route type three, we can verify actually the new capabilities that are advertised there. So we can see, for example, that we have the IGMP snooping capabilities, but besides that, we have this OISM part 
that was added in order to inform the rest of the uh, public nodes about the capabilities of uh, the given node. So saying that, yes, I can understand OISM and I can uh, work in this mode with you. So once that information is populated to the rest of the nodes, then for example, Nokia uh, will understand that the remote device is uh, OISM capable, right? So that information was added in the IM routes of uh, EDPF. And then if we look at the SMET route uh, content, uh, we can also verify whether that something new was, was added there, right? So if we check that prefix uh, content, we, we see that it's just uh, the community of the SBD that is advertised as well as the information about the type of encapsulation that is used. So you can see that the VXLAN is used there. And then the key point here is to say, that this metro will precisely uh, inform uh, the rest of the public about the intent uh, of, uh, of getting a specific multicast group on reception, right? So we claim that we want to join that multicast group on 225 uh, 0012, which is uh, actually uh, having a source uh, connected to a uh, Nokia uh, leaf device, right? So that's for the uh, control plane part. And whenever we would like to verify the data plane uh, of uh, the given node, so we can verify that by checking the multicast route on the given instance and verify which interfaces are on the list of outgoing interfaces and which interfaces are the IP interfaces, right? Involved in the, in the whole uh, multicast chain. Regarding the, the outputs, we can verify that show route uh, on the given instance level we can say that with information regarding the IP OISM uh, verb, uh, we see that the data plane packets are uh, changing. So we have some outgoing interfaces that are present on this given node. You can see that the, this information is really changing, right? So we have the statistics that are live statistics and that we have the local port, which is IRB75, that was uh, uniquely enabled on uh, the Juniper side. So whenever we get the traffic from the OISM SBD IRB, then it's just routed locally uh, uh, to that IRB uh, 7.5, right? And we can see that the data plane part is, is, is really working well here. So uh, that's something we can also observe at the outgoing interface level simply. So we can check that, for example, we are getting the traffic from the core. Uh, so we get that traffic from the core. That's the, uh, the link used to connect to the spine device. And then if we look at the uh, outgoing interface, uh, it's, it's also gonna be showing the, 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 the traffic uh, that is uh, going out to the receiver. So we can see that it's coming on the leaf device and then we have the leaf device that is sending it to the receiver, right? Because the receiver originated that IGMP uh, V2 membership report message, which uh, is uh, saying that uh, there is an interest to join that multicast group. So I hope uh, that now we will be uh, able to see some of the Arista outputs. Uh, Alex, uh, back to you. Okay, thanks very much, Michael. So uh, similarly in the, the topology, like uh, Michael's Juniper Relief, uh, we're also a receiver for the multicast traffic. Uh, now to receive the multicast traffic, I'm going to advertise my multicast capabilities, my OSM capabilities. So what we can see here is I'm looking at one of my leafs. And if I look at, first of all, from the bridging domain where I have my receiver, I'm going to be advertising my multicast capability. So you can see here in my type three route, you can see in the flags here, I'm advertising my IGMP proxy capability. So this then informs any remote uh, leaf, in this case, the Nokia device, that I'm capable of being uh, sending an estimate route and therefore should expect an estimate route for me if I'm interested in a particular group. Now, because we're also running uh, layer 3 multicast or OISM, if we call it, in the EVN environment. I'm also advertising in my IMAT route for my SBD, so my supplementary bridge domain. I'm also advertising my uh, capability for OISM. So you can see here now in my IMAT route, so my type 3 route, in my flags, I have my proxy capability. I have also my OISM capability, so allowing me to support the layer 3 functionality we're discussing here in testing, right? and my SBD, my supplementary bridge domain. So in this topology, uh, I am a leaf, and therefore I have a spirant device, a receiver, sorry, I should say. So downstream of that, I have a spirant, and a spirant is going to join, uh, generate a, a local IGMP join. And as a consequence of this, then I have my 
you can see in my snippy table for my local bridge domain, you can see I've received the local join. And that join is actually being see, seen on a port channel because again, the way I'm running in this, I have two devices, two ARISTA devices and I'm running, making use of eVPN all active, apology. And so, so the consequence of receiving that local join on this device, I'm then going to generate the type six route, right? So the type six route is then going to be used or the estimate route is going to be used to signal across the BGP control plane to any uh, source, in this case, the Nokia source on the remote relief that I'm interested in the group. So, so I'm interested in the group and the group I'm interested, you can see from the estimate itself, you can see 225-00012. Okay. And this is sent with a root target of the SBD itself. Okay. So therefore allowing uh, the remote leaf where the source resides, the Nokia in this case, to actually import the root and then populate his own uh, routing table, uh, uh, multicast routing table. Now also, as part of this, I, I generate an estimate route, but I need to also synchronize, synchronize my local IGMP state uh, because I'm running all active. So I also generate a second route, which is a type seven route. And I generate that to synchronize the state with my peer that's running in the same ESI. So you can see this from the CLI. Okay, so you can see a synchronized state with the ESI where I've seen the local join and I'm therefore synchronizing that with the ESI, the other PE, PEs that are part of that same ESI. So I'm gonna now hand it over to Jorge, who's gonna now talk about whose leaf is actually sending the traffic. So over to you, Jorge. Thank you, Alex. So I'm gonna show you now the Nokia uh, box. Uh, I have a service router uh, acting as a leaf in the uh, VXLAN fabric. And my box is actually connected to the Spartan port that is sourced in the uh, multicast traffic. And that is going to be received by the Arista box and the uh, Juniper uh, leaf as well. So in order to send the, uh, the multicast traffic to those two uh, leaf uh, routers, basically I need first to receive the IMET routes from, uh, from Arista and, and Juniper and, and make sure that the, uh, the right cap capabilities are signaled in the IMET routes for the SBD or the supplementary uh, broadcast domain. So as you can see here on my uh, terminal, I'm receiving uh, three IMET routes. And uh, if I do a hunt modifier of the command, uh, you can see those three routes with um, greater detail on my ribbon. You can see this is the uh, IMET route for the SBD coming from Juniper. I see my multicast flags, they are all okay. Uh, they are uh, received with the right route target for the SBD and the uh, VXLAN encapsulation. And if I keep going, I will see two more routes. Okay, coming from Arista. This is from uh, node 147. And this is for from node 146. Both uh, Arista devices are multi homed and both are advertising the uh, multicast capabilities in the context of the supplementary uh, broadcast domain. So with that information, obviously I'm also sending in my reboute, you will find my IMET route, uh, you know, being advertised from the Nokia device. Same thing with the multicast flags and for the XLAN, all in the context of the SBD. Now, so once I have uh, those routes, I can build my VXLAN connections to those uh, boxes, to Arista and Juniper. And in order to uh, send, to start sending the, uh, the multicast flow, I need to receive the SMET routes or the um, selective multicast Ethernet type routes or EVPN routes type six from both Arista and Juniper. And uh, I'm going to show you here again the SMET routes that I'm, I'm receiving in the context of the supplementary broadcast domain, which is route target 1000, 1000. So as you can see, I'm receiving two routes, one from node 75, which is Juniper. In that route, I can see that Juniper is requesting this flow, this multicast flow. So uh, uh, group 2250012 and uh, any source. And same thing from uh, the designated forwarder of the Arista multi-home pair. 
I get a, a route from uh, 146, which is the designated forwarder in that uh, Ethernet segment. And uh, node 146 is actually requesting the same uh, multicast flow for group 225.0.0.12. I can show more details in this command. Uh, you can see the, the flags that is uh, that are actually indicating that this is a version two group. Same thing uh, with the uh, the Arista uh, route. Now I've seen the uh, IMET route, so I have my data path uh, VXLAN tunnel built and added to the SBD. I've seen that both routers Arista and Juniper they are both interested in the multicast group two two five zero zero twelve. So now. I can I can show how I build with that information that I will receive from my BGP control plane. I build my multicast forwarding database. And I can see that indeed for the multicast group 2250012, I have my, my local attachment port connected to Spiron. But I, I also have two SBD VXAM tunnels. One is going to node 75, which is Juniper in the uh, context of the SBD. So I'm gonna send the traffic with a DNI 1000. And uh, another one to the um, Arista designated for the box. Same thing with the DNI of 1000. I can uh, show also that I am indeed receiving uh, traffic on my local BD. That's a uh, BD12. My local port is 11C21, on a VLAN 12. And if I look at the statistics, I can see that I'm indeed receiving a multicast traffic on my, my English multicast queue on that access port. So that is the port connected to Spiron that is sourcing the multicast traffic to group 2250012. With that, we've proven that I'm receiving multicast traffic from Spiron. I can uh, understand the control plane from uh, Arista and Juniper. I'm building my uh, data path. And uh, based on the estimate routes, I'm actually sending the multicast traffic to both leaves, Arista and Juniper. And now uh, over to you, Michael. Thank you, Jorge. So before we finish the session, we'd like to just highlight a couple of takeaways uh, from the EDPN VXLAN OISM session. So the optimized inter-subnet multicast uh, routing technology we demonstrated, in fact, enables uh, the multicast capabilities in the data center fabric. So EDPN, uh, BGP signalization, common for uh, multicast and uh, unicast. And then uh, as a transport, we've seen that we can uh, leverage the multicast uh, traffic uh, in a pure overlay manner using the VXLAN tunnels that are signalized using the EDPN BGP uh, capabilities. We've seen also that OISM can in fact interrupt between diff different vendors. So we can have leave devices, for example, from one vendor, border devices from the other vendor, and then we can still run and get the benefits of the OISM multicast capabilities. And at the ENTC uh, 2021 in Germany, we verified in fact the control plane, but also the data plane capabilities of the OISM. We've seen that Spiron is in fact injecting the multicast feeds and the vendors are receiving that multicast feed. So it's, it was very important for us to, to make sure we check both of these uh, aspects, control plane as well as data plane. So thank you for your attention and uh, we hope to show more of the information regarding the interoperability aspects. Please check the ENTC YouTube channel in order to uh, get more of the sessions around the interoperability topic. Thank you.